don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's Mike here, if you hadn't recognised the voice. Um, so I was going through my mission inspiration art journal um, that I did throughout 2020 um, and I was going through the pages thinking to myself you know, I really ought to film a flip through um, of the main missions plus um, maybe do a flip through, a joint flip through of all of the mid-month mini missions that I did using the tag journal um, December's, seeing as we're at or almost at the end of the year. Um, so while I was going through the main journal, the main missions for 2020, um, I got to October and there's a missing page. I did challenge number two, which was the Halloween one for October. You see, it says on the sheet V2, which is version two, but I never actually did version one, which was the non-Halloween version for October, which traditionally for the Mission Inspiration Challenges has a fall or autumn kind of theme. So this was the prompt sheet and sure enough, so the colours were red, yellow and orange, lovely warm palette, and obviously the theme autumn leaves, and the words for inspiration were leaves, acorns, sunset, wind and rain. So a very autumnal kind of back endy theme for the year. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So I can't really do a flip through of a journal for the year if it's not complete. So my task today, <laughs> should I wish to accept it, which obviously I do, is to create um, a page for version one, which is the autumn leaves. So I've already gone ahead and cut my nine inch circle um, for the journal um, out of mixed media cardstock or mixed media paper. So this is cut from um, 250 GSM or 169 pound weight, but it's mixed media, so it's good for um, watercolours, acrylics and lots of kind of um, wet medium because it's strong enough to hold on to it. This particular pad is only A4 which basically means it's too small for a 9 inch. So I've had to cut mine out of its larger sister which is the A3 one. So I've got both, one for smaller projects and one for larger projects. Um, so, And they're not that expensive. The Dale Rowney ones. Not expensive and it's good quality paper. So to start off with then this is going to be my background. So I want it to kind of be earthy and uh, well kind of earth toned. So I'm going to grab a cloth. This is just an old um, kitchen towel, say kitchen towel, an old tea towel which has already got stains and, and nasty bits all over it. And I'm going to just drop it down onto my work surface there and I've got my spritzers that I made earlier in the year from the Brusho pigment powders. Now if you um, if you missed the video on how I turned the pigment powders into the spritzers I'll put one of those um, kind of eye cardy things up here and I'll link to the video if you want to watch how I created the spritzers um, inexpensively you know, apart from the bottles, um, but I'll also put a link in the description area below this video so you can see how I did it. So you've got two options and how to catch up on that video. So these are the spritzers so I've pulled out from my collection of colours that I created from those powders. All of the, the kind of warm tones, but I also dipped into some of the greens as well, which go into the cool palette. So I've got the lime green and the sea green on one side and then all of the warms at this side. So I've got my Brilliant Red, I've got the Sandstone, which is a, a nice little kind of yellowy, orangey brown, Bright Lemon, I've also got Orange, and I've also got that kind of in-betweeny colour, the Yellow Ochre. So to start off with, then I'm going to create a background 
using those spritzers, but I'm only going to be using the darker kind of tones on those. So I'm going to be using the sandstone, the yellow ochre, and I might throw in just a touch of that lime green or the sea green because that's the dark, actually the sea green is the darker one so I might just add in a little touch of that but I'm going to be doing a lot of drying so we'll be doing, I'll be doing some spritzing and drying in between so I'm just grab a little bit of kitchen roll paper towel because we will also be doing a little bit of mopping up and a little bit of blotting which is always fun. Okay, so I'll start off with the sandstone. So I'll give it a shake and then I'm just going to just prime it and then just release it across the page. Like so. So that's the sandstone. Of course, you always get it on your finger. <laughs> Obviously the paper's going to start curling up, but that's okay. So I'm going to come in with the yellow ochre and do the same thing again. Prime it. Let's see if it's going to work. It should do. Oh. Do you know, this sometimes happens. The tops of those bottles sometimes spread, just completely flow off. So what you've got to do, so I've got a couple of spares but it's only the, the spritzer part, this bit, which has caused the problem. But I have got spares. Not because I was expecting it, but just because when you don't use them for a while, sometimes, you know, that does happen. Um, expect the unexpected, my motto. Right, okay, so let's add some of that yellow ochre down here. And you can see how it's starting to maneuver and starting to move. So what have I used so far? I've used the sandstone and the yellow ochre. So I'm going to add just a small amount, I think, of that sea green in there as well. Hopefully this is going to, yeah, that's fine. Just to kind of add a little bit of it in that background. So we're creating a kind of mottly background. It all looks kind of dark on the screen, doesn't it? Let's see if I can try and lighten it up a little bit. There we go. Exposure's probably gone a bit wild now. I'll turn it down again in a little while. So what I also want to do is just before I get the heat gun on that, I just want to add some water over the top just to kind of get it moving. And now I'm going to dry it off. Okay, that's almost dry, but before it gets completely dry, I'm just going to blot out those larger areas. I've still got some ink on there, so as we're going round, we're actually lifting off and dropping down at the same time. So that's dried a lot lighter than what the pigments were down originally because that's just the nature of the beast. That's just what happens. But we've got a nice kind of, almost a marble kind of effect. But if you're like me, I like to make sure I like a little bit more pigment on the backgrounds of my pages. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add some more where it's at the lighter point. Neat. Then I'm gonna dry it. Okay, so again, almost dry, and then we'll just lift off those areas that are still a little bit wet. We've got some nice kind of mottling going on there. So again, I'm going to go back in, and this time add in some more um, of that yellow ochre. <coughs> Excuse me. There is a lot of green in this which is fine. So we'll just let that sit for a second and then I'll go back in with the heat gun. My heat gun's playing up again. 
There we go. Don't mind the drippage. It running. Don't mind that at all. But if you don't want pools, just go in with your kitchen towel and just lift off. Just lightly dab. Okay, so that background is dry. It almost looks like a topographical, topographical map now, doesn't it? Almost like you're looking down at Google Maps or something. Um, so you've got all those kind of low-lying areas, you've got the darker areas, the wooded areas. It does kind of look like a map, I think, anyway. But the paper is quite crinkly, look at that. All wrinkled and crinkled. So the way to get around that is just to add a little bit of water to the back of your page. So just a light spritz just restores some of that moisture back into the paper and will help just to kind of lower it back down again. So all I do is just push down and let it kind of absorb back into the paper. And it will help just to remove or reduce a little bit of that additional wrinklage. You can of course if you want to just do that to counterbalance it, but don't do it too far. There we go. So as you can see now, we've gone from really wrinkly to almost flat. And you've not damaged the front. Okay, so we've done that bit. So what I want to do now is just to create a few kind of highlights in the background on this one. So again, using that water spritzer bottle, I'm going to just go around and add just a few drips over the top like so. Let them wick for a second or so. Just let that water sit, reactivate the spritzers but just in those areas where it's landed and then after a second or two we can go back in with a piece of kitchen towel and then just lift off some of that pigment that's been reactivated. And look at those lovely kind of lighter areas that we've got. So just go around the page, making sure we collect as many of those water droplets back up as we can. Yeah, look at that, fantastic. And of course, what you can also do is, you've gone lighter, if you want to go darker, you can also do that as well. So you can go in with, say you want to go darker colours, like I've got the sandstone, and you can add, that's a bit too big, that little blob on there, let's just do that again, and just add a few splatters. Just, about, just to add a little bit of texture and interest into your background. And again, this is always going to be one of those things where it's, um, you do it to taste. You do it and carry on going until you're happy with it and it's what you want. As little or as much as you want to do. So everything is now dry on the paper. It's fairly flat or a lot flatter than it was. And my topographical map just looks that little bit more textured now because we've got those lighter areas and we've also got those dark speckles on there. So that's my background. I'm now gonna start working on um, my foreground. So I'm gonna put this to one side and grab some more paper. Okay, I've just had one of those senior moments where um, I'm talking away to myself, I'm explaining what I'm doing, and then I look up and realise I hadn't pressed record on the, um, on, the cam on the camera. Yeah, I know. So I'll put that to one side, and then I'll 
just have to repeat what I've just said <laughs> to myself. Okay, so as we did with the background piece, I'm going to do the same with this piece of mixed media cardstock, but predominantly I'm going to be working with the greens. So I'm going to start off with the lime green and then I'm going to go in with the darker sea green. So I'm just going to spritz around and it will start to curl on its own, but that's okay because you can always just hold it down with your finger and then come in with that darker colour. It's always a good idea as well when you're doing this, if you do manage to get any on your fingers like I've done, is just remember to wash your hands with, um, with soap and water before you go and do any laundry, particularly white, because otherwise you're going to end up getting the pigment on your smalls. Anyway, let's get that dried. First coat. Okay, like I said, I'm going to build up the colours, so I'm going to go back in again. And then dry that off. And then again with the light. Okay, so I'm now going to add a little bit, just a teeny teeny bit of that sandstone colour, that little brown or that lightish brown. Just let it sit and absorb. But the predominant colour on there is still going to be the green. I'm going to keep on adding the layers until I'm happy with the overall effect. If you're wondering what the tool is that I'm using that keeps kind of like dropping the power and then picking back up again, it's the Ranger Heated Craft Tool. Over the years I've had about four or five of these because, you know, they don't last. And for 25 you know, pounds, as they cost here in the UK, you'd expect it to last a few more years than it actually does, but, you know, Nobody said that Ranger did everything that was brilliant quality. Okay, so I'm going to add just a few kind of speckles into the background. I'm going to use orange. That's if it's not going to gum up on me again like the other ones have. Let's have a look, hang on. Sometimes, yeah, that one's gonna go. <clears throat> That's okay, I can just use the flicks with the orange. That'll do. I don't want a huge amount and it will react with the green to give me a little bit of, of a warm tone. Then again, I'm going to go back in with that darker green just over the top, just to intensify a bit more. Like I said, you can to and fro as many times as you want on these things. It's when you're happy with the outcome, that's when you stop layering. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And again, I'm going to go in this time Add those drops. Let them sit just for a second or two. I'm just getting some kitchen towel ready. 
and then I think that will do. Down, and then you can see the pigment that's being lifted off. There we go. So I'm happy with that kind of mottly green. Okay, so I can put that one to one side with that and then work on the final few bits. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly the same process that I did for the green. I'm going to use a piece of white mixed media cardstock and two pieces of craft paper. But for these, I'm going to use the warmer tones again. So predominantly reds, oranges and yellows. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off with the lighter colours first. So go over with the lemon. Like so. And then this time I'm going to dry in between layers. That's the mixed media cardstock. I'll show you what happens on the craft paper. So obviously you're starting with a different colour, so it's going to react differently and look different. Okay, so those are the yellows. So I did two pieces of the craft paper and one piece of the mixed media cardstock. So, like I said, I'm going to go through and I'm going to start adding in those colours, but I do want to swap that nozzle on that orange before I do anything else for a new one, just because. There we go. Okay, so here we go with the orange. Okay, and again, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to get it dried and then I'll be back. Okay, so now we're going to add some red. Which is really going to show up nicely on that craft paper. And again, I'm going to get those dried off. Okay, so I think at this stage, because you've seen me doing this loads and loads of times, what I will do is I will put it on fast forward, play a little bit of music, and you'll see me adding more of the pigments and layering until I'm happy. I will probably go in and add a little bit of the yellow ochre, a bit more of the orange, maybe some more of the lemon, um, as I'm building up, building up the layers and building up the layers. And you will see me splatter the white and flick a little bit of brown on there as well. And then I'll join with you again when they're all done. I'm happy with the layers. I'm happy with the splatters. Um, and everything's dry. Okay? Deal. I'll also go make myself a cup of coffee because that one's nearly gone.
Okay, so as you can see, my oranges on the craft paper are done. The mixed media paper is done. I've got them as flat as I possibly can, apart from that one, which is a bit curly. So this one's nice and mottled, there's dark areas, which is cool. And then we've got our background. So I'll put the background to one side because there's still some bits and pieces that I need to do here. So I'm going to do some cutouts. When I say cutouts, I mean dies. So I'm going to be using a couple of Tim Holtz. So if I just turn those on the side, you can see which ones I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the tattered leaves and the garden greens. These are the big dies, which are the steel ruled ones. I'm going to do one set out of the greens, which is why we have one of the greens. And I'm going to do the three of the orange set out of the tattered leaves. So I'm going to go away and run those through my big shot, but I won't bore you with the details of how that's done because you all know how to operate a die cutting machine. So I'll do that and then I'll be right back with the bits. Okay, so done with those dies. Here are my bits. And I probably won't throw these bits away make it those for another project another day. So let's just pop all those bits out. I've had these dies for so long that they're probably starting to get a bit blunt. So just have to tease them and pull them out a little bit. There we go. So we've got nine of those. And then we should have two bits of greenery. So I have to be very careful just to pop these out. Because again, the older, the older the dyes get, the blunter they get. But look at the variation on the leaves, which is cool. And this one's a tad intricate. You've just got to be careful while taking it out. I probably should have run it through a couple of times just to make sure that the blade cut. There we go. Perfect. See, almost a stencil on its own there. So we've got two pieces of greenery and all these lovely kind of autumn leaves. So what I want now is, is that just a single one? is just to kind of distress these a little bit with some distress inks. So we've got, let's see, Rusty Hinge, Mowed Lawn, let's see what else we've got, Green Wise and Orange Wise. Uh, vintage Photo, Ground Espresso, Carved Pumpkin, so we've got some nice Candied Apple, Abandoned Coral Reds, Fried Brick Reds. So we will grab some foams. That's the brown one. And then I've got one for each kind of colour group in this section here. So we'll have a red and then we'll swap that dark blue foam for being orange. And then we need one green, don't we? Or do we? Brown, red, orange. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just not bother for now. And let's just see how it takes us. So let's get some vintage photo. And I've got to be really, really careful here. So we'll take just one of those leaves. Give it a little bit of attention just to darken up the edge. Let's see where's that candied apple. Actually five bricks that's darker isn't it? So I'm just using the minis for now. Let's see what happens. 
Ooh, look at that red tinge. Actually, that's probably better. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time probably just going around each one of these kind of like leaves, just distressing it and going around the edges just to kind of give it a little bit, I just picked up the wrong colour, a little bit more depth and dimension but I've got to do it very very carefully so as not to damage and wrinkle the leaves too much but just to kind of give them a little bit of depth. Okay, so I'll carry on doing this and then, because I've got nine pieces to do. As you can see, I'll go ahead and do all the other pieces and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have finished with distressing all the edges on my little autumn leaves, as you can see. Now, I've got, um, the sun is not far from setting <laughs> here in the UK at this moment in time. Um, so I've got direct sunlight coming in right from behind me uh, and it's kind of throwing a different light on things. So I do apologize if it looks a bit odd, likewise. Okay, so, like I said, I've gone around everything with um, the, the brown distressings and there's some red distressings. Um, I had a little bit of green and yellows in certain areas, so we've got a nice kind of bundle of foliage and leaves. So I'm now going to bring in um, the base that we're going to stick everything down onto, and I'm going to create a nice kind of layered cluster, a kind of autumn cluster down on the page like so. See, if I could just stick that down as it is, that would be perfect. Just look at that, exactly what you want. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll put some of the green foliage down first around the page, then we can build our little kind of cluster up around it. So we'll do that, bring some of that up there, bring that down there a little bit, and maybe just a tad there. And I think that's probably going to be just about where we want to stick things. So let's just get some PVA glue. So this PVA is a little bit thicker than like the Elmer's, so it will kind of like hold things in place. Just drop it down, and of course it will dry clear. So I'll probably just put a little blob onto each of the leaves. There's no real need to put much glue on the stem. We just in a couple of places, just little bits, because it will hold. I'll put some of that green foliage about there. And like I said, I'm not worried about some of the glue showing because it will dry completely clear. And I don't want to rub too much either because it'll probably lift the colour from the, the base, the main background, because none of it's been sealed. So let's just stick that maybe up there, just at that angle. Then the main foliage. So I'll just go around each leaf. So again, this is going to take a while just to place things down. And I'm using the wet glue so that it's not sticking down immediately. So that if I want to just move and tweak and just jimmy and do final finessing before it grabs and this glue will allow me to do that. So there we go. So let's push it down. Okay and we can start building up our layers of leaves. I'm going to save 
the lighter ones that I did on the mixed media cardstock first because they're not quite as dark so they'll be nice to have in the front so let's just start building up some of these leaves now and I'm not going to be gluing them down flat I'm going to want to add um, a bit of dimension so I'll leave the edges to curl a little bit and then maybe just add a little bit onto the stem just to hold that down and then we'll just add those leaves in, just spaced out. A bit there, a bit there. Right, so this is going to take a little bit of time, so I shall probably pop it on fast forward and you can watch me as I'm sticking stuff down, creating my little clusters. And then I'll join with you when it's all done. Okay, so all my leaves are kind of stuck down in place. I'm going to leave that to dry for a second or two until just some of that PVA has disappeared. As you can still see it there, look. And then I'll be back just to do the final touches to the page. Okay, so just to finish off, now everything is dry on there and the glue has kind of disappeared. So we've got that lovely kind of foliage in the background that really nice green mottled effect in the background I've also gone on but you can't really see it and marked kind of halfway because that's where the page is going to be folded into the journal when I stick it down but I wanted to add a little bit of a quote onto the page and also just wanted to double check or make sure that I knew exactly where it needed to be folded if I just quickly do that all the way down, there we go, I know where to put my quote on the page now. So what I've done is I've done a search on the interwebs and I found this fantastic little autumn themed haiku by a lady called Mary Serenek or Serenk. Um, it's from a 2018 writing competition, an Australian website. Um, so I'm borrowing this for my art journal page. Um, so what I want to do is I want to uh, print it off on the computer, obviously. Green out, uh, with white writing because um, I want it to kind of blend into the background a little bit. Um, and obviously haiku is a little poem done with three lines first line having five syllables, second line having seven, and the third line having five syllables. Um, so, gentle breezes blow, coloured hues of red and gold, cloak the waiting earth, which I thought was perfect for this art journal page. So I'm just going to go around and tear each of those kind of lines out from the background.
normally I'd sit down and probably compose my own little haiku but I don't really have that much time today in which to do that. I'd love to be able to but just I can't do it today. Because it's something that you'd need to sit and think about. <laughs> it's not something you just do on the spare of the moment. It's like sit down and be creative. You can't do it. You've got to be in the right frame of mind to either create an art journal page or to write poetry. It's not like you can just suddenly go, oh, yeah, OK, I'm going to do that now. Creative by demand. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Unless, of course, you're one of these spontaneous kind of rapper types who can just spontaneously knock out a rhyme. But I'm not like that. I have to have time to think. There we go. And perfect, more than anything. Okay, so we've got that one. And oh, where's the last line gone? That must be it there. There we go. Out of the way. Kill. Okay. And then that one can get a little bit smaller. No, 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 see, wrong way around. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. So, we'll see if we can try and fit this in. Um, if not, I'll have to cut uh, around and tear to get that glued down. But I want to add a little bit of distress around the edges. Have I put the distress inks away, he says. Yes, he has. Come on. There we go. Okay, so. Why did I put this black mat down? I don't really need it, do I? I thought I was going to be cutting, that's why, but I'm not. Now he's distressing. Just around that edge. And this will just help to blend it all together. The sun is streaming in behind me. I've got a couple of lights, as you can see, the reflections on the mat here, which is just like counteracting the sunlight, but I still can't really see what's up on my um, TV monitor in front of me because the sun's shining on it. It's all kind of bleached out at the minute, so I'm hoping I'm in shot. I'm kind of working a bit blind. I may have to do this again, just to reduce the size a little bit, just to get it to fit. But we'll see. Doing it on the fly, as the saying goes. What's the other way? Winging it. Winging it. Here we go. I'm winging it. So let's see if we can position that. Let's audition it on the page, and then we'll be able to see whether it fits or not. So maybe just have to lose a little. Perhaps I should have printed it a bit smaller. Okay, let's see how that fits. Just about fits in there. That's one of the biggest lines, I think. But we can lose a little bit off there. Which makes it a bit more organic, doesn't it? Lovely. Okay, let's get that glue ready. Okay, so I changed my mind halfway through. Um, Realised that the colour was a bit wrong, a bit too dark greeny colour, and also that the text was a bit too big. So I did it again in a lighter green. Um, went a bit mad with the distressing and ended up <laughs> completely obscuring the word hue. So I've gone in with a pen 
just to do it because you know we do these things on the hoof like I've said okay so let's get these glued down so just use the same glue again just that white PVA stuff a little bead on there and then so that we've got the crease it fits in a lot better now because I can also just tuck that line underneath that leaf as well and just put that there and do the next line So the next line can go about there, just where those leaves are, the foliage. Just got a little bit of wiggle room on this glue just to make sure we kind of like get the lines as straight as we can. And then the other final one. And then cloak the waiting earth like so. I think that green works a bit better than that real dark one. A bit too dark, I think. This is a bit more genteel. Like I said, I've gone around the edges just to kind of make it pop a little bit uh, with that vintage photo distress ink. But I also went around the edges of the page as well while I was waiting for it to print again. So not quite finished. So I've got this pen. Now I'd love to be able to tell you who it's by, who the manufacturer is, um, and what's in it. But I can't because it's all in Chinese or Mandarin or some could be Japanese I suppose I've, I just don't know it's <laughs> it was sent to me a while ago uh, as part of a uh, happy mail uh, and I didn't realize what it was until I started playing with it recently so um, yeah so that's what I've written the word Hughes with um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go around some of the leaves now they're a bit dry just adding in a little bit of kind of doodle and a little bit of leaf detail just on some of those leaves but just kind of scribbly just like that just to add a little bit of kind of detail as they probably would have if they were real leaves but not go too mad so just I'm doing it just really kind of lightly just so you get kind of like the impression Just add a tad bit of doodly detail. It works better actually on the darker ones. I think that looks and nice. Okay, so we've got that, but 
I also just want to add a little bit of shade in. So I've got a Stabilo All pencil in black and I'm just going to activate it with a water brush. Just pick up a little bit of that colour and then just add a little bit of shadow just down towards the bottom and kind of underneath the leaves a little bit. Just to add a little bit more texture and then a little bit between the leaves. Just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. There we go, just to add a little bit of darkness and a little bit of shadow under everything. Subtlish, which is what you want. You don't want it to be too in your face. Just like that. And I think we'll just get that dried and then I'll be back. Okay, so I think now that that's all dry, we've got that nice little bit of shade in the darkness just behind those leaves a little bit. It just kind of helps it pop just that little bit more. So here's the journal. That's the brief for October version one. I'm hoping it's not too bright and you can actually see it. So colours red, yellow and orange, which we've got in the leaves in the background. And we've got leaves, acorn, sunset, wind and rain. Okay, I've got leaves in there too. So. I think mission accomplished. So I shall just fold that over now and then grab my glue. It says try not to knock the light. There we go, back up there. And then I'm going to glue this into the journal. Okay, so that's plenty of glue in there. And then try and centre it up onto the page. I may have to clip this down just to make sure that it will not move. There we go. And then have I got some clips somewhere? One of these drawers in front of me. Do, 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 do. Let's move that out the way. Yes, there we go. So we just need to make sure that it gets clipped down so it doesn't move too far forward and too far back. That should do us about there, I think. And about there. And about there. Let's try and get that right into the corner. That one right into the corner. And then we've got another one I can use just to hold it down about there. Clips everywhere. <laughs> and that should hold about there. Okay, so. That should be held in place now. So I'll give that a minute or two just to hold and grab, and then I'll be back. Okay, so my page is pretty much stuck down where I want it to go. So I've got the Mission Inspiration Brief Sheet for, it's very bright, isn't it? Um, for October version number one, so it needs to go before version number two. 
that's October version number two. So everything's in the right order. So all I have to do now is just to add a little bit of glue there and just stick the brief in just in the right place on the page. So, more glue. So we're going to do it that way. Now we'll do it that way like I've done with all of them. There we go. Used a phenomenal amount of glue on this one. There we go. Definitely won't be going anywhere in a hurry. That gives me plenty of wiggle room to get it lined up. Smooth it down. Okay, so what I normally do then is sign and date them. So I will sign this one at the bottom. And today's date is the 20th of December. So 12, 20, 12, 20. There you go. So better late than never, eh? <laughs> so that's it. So that was October's version one for 2020. So now the journal's complete with all 13 projects. So everything from January to December, including the two for October. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that. I will do the flip through right the way from the beginning to the end with the tag journal as well in the next video. So that's all for me for now. Um, we will be starting again from January with the Mission Inspiration Challenges in a slightly different format. I like to change the format just ever so slightly each year just to keep it interesting and fresh and I'll be doing exactly the same thing again in January. So don't forget, um, I'll put the link on the screen now so you can see it to our Facebook group. There's the main uh, challenge at the beginning of the month, the first Saturday in the month. And then there's the mid-month mini mission inspiration, um, which follows on two weeks after that, somewhere around about the middle. So, and occasionally there will be the, the odd extra challenge thrown in there too, just to keep you busy, um, <laughs> as if you haven't got enough to do. So yeah, there'll be a clickable description, a clickable link in the description area below, along with that link to the spritzers um, that I said I'd pop in there as well. So, like I said, that's all from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.